Thank you for watching Trek Wars. If you like this material, please subscribe and make a comment. And with that being said, victory is life. No, oh, okay. Well, I know our previous videos, we have a couple videos about the Star Wars ships, and I talked about the differences with the power levels between the shields and the hull values, and I've talked about the SPD shields and the RU hull value and converted my terawatt formulas with our Star Trek ships. And we've seen that in the Star Wars universe that those ships are significantly weaker than the Star Trek universe. Now, here's something's fun, and I decided I want to show this, guys, and share this with you guys. What if the Star Wars like factories were using the same materials that are in the Star Trek universe. How would they add up and what would things look like? That's what today's video is going to be. We're going to pretend that Star Wars ships are using the same materials as Star Trek and we're going to put them head to head and we're going to use the Imperial class ISD and we're going to talk about the Enterprise D. All right, this video is going to be just a whole lot of fun. I've been looking forward to doing this. Sorry, guys, it's been a while since I've been able to give you guys some videos. I've been in recovery, and now that I'm out, I'm back to making videos. So let's get right down to it. So we're going to have the Galaxy-class Starship, and we're going to be versing an Imperial-class Star Destroyer. But with this is some things I want you to take consideration. We are going to be using the same materials and armor strength seen on the Galaxy-class Starship. And we're going to be using those same building techniques to make our Imperial class Star Destroyer. We're going to look at the mass, we're going to look at the hull, we're going to look at the shields, and we're going to talk about the firepower with those formulas, with those changes. So first off, let's engage. All right, so the very first thing is we got to take an analysis and look at the size difference. So an Imperial 1 class Star Destroyer is around 27,000 metric tons. A Galaxy class Starship like the Enterprise is 4,500,000. So there is a six times difference between the two. So obviously the Imperial class Star Destroyer is six times the mass of a Galaxy class Starship. So we're going to go ahead and start with that, and then we're going to make our way with our data tables and figure out what's the power output level, what's the energy, what's going on here. So let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out the scaling of the Star Wars universe, and it uses this RU scaling. And so in Imperial Class 1 Star Destroyer, RU level is 2,722. So we need to figure out what that conversion would be in our Star Trek universe, seeing as that this ship is six times the size. So a lot of my Star Trek formulas are based on uh, mass and armor. We're going to go ahead and do that. And once we do that conversion, this is what it'll look like. Okay, so like I said, we swapped that in the Star Trek universe. So one RU is worth around 2,292 terawatts of damage. All my Star Trek ships are in terawatts, so that's how we're going to figure out that. So you can see that one RU is 2,292. Remember that number, it's really important, and that'll help us with our next data table. All right, and for those people who are like super, super awesome and really like want to know how I was doing this and what I was doing, so the Galaxy class hull value based on the, my formulas has always been 1,040,000. So that ship is six times the mass, so six times is going to be 6,240,000. ,000. So that's a rough estimation of what exactly it is. That's not 100% accurate, but it's in the right ballpark. So that can give you an idea that obviously the Imperial class Star Destroyer, its whole value is six times that of basically a Galaxy class Starship. Okay. So now that we got that, now let's kind of figure out the weapons. So in order to figure out the weapons, we're going to have to do a little bit of extra math. All right, in order to figure that out, we need a ship that has been destroyed. We know the shields, we know the hull value, we know that the SPDs, the RUs, all that good stuff, which I think it should be SPD, not SBD. All right, so it should be SPD, but I am not going to redo those images, and I don't care. So we're moving on. So, okay, so let's look at that whole string. So if we use our formulas, we already know what it is. So that's going to turn our Nebulon B hull values 
26,816. Now, the reason why this is so important is we know how many hits it took to take down the shields of this ship. We also know how many hits it took to take down the hull of this ship. So the hull value was worth 12 shots from an Imperial class Star Destroyer and its shields were worth 14. So we have some different formulas and we'll have to talk about that when we get to the shields. All right, keep it super simple. So the SPD is 1,976. When we look at the hull value and then we take that, obviously the change between 12 and 14 is 1.16. So we're gonna use that formula and then we'll figure out the shields and now we'll know exactly what our, what our one SPD is. And that's 1975, <laughs> so 1,975. All right, so based on these weird formulas, and I just wanna tell you guys, the RUs and the SPDs don't make any sense when you actually look at the size of ships in the Star Wars universe and the Star Trek or the Star Wars universe and you compare because there's just absolutely no way that six Nebulon Bs should be able to take on an Imperial class Star Destroyer. There's just no way. When you look at the size difference of the weapon capabilities, but I'm just kind of going on a tangent right now. I just want to tell you guys that. So so the SPDs is 1,896,000. The RU, which is the hull, is 1,026,816. So based on these formulas, based off the Imperial Class Star Destroyer, if we took those, those formulas and we converted them like the Star Wars universe says, the Nebulon B hull value is around the same as a Galaxy Class Starship. And its shields are about 100,000 points higher than, in, or than a galaxy class starship. So based on these formulas, they would the, a nebula class starship would be in the same power output level of a galaxy class starship. Now, before we do that, I just wanted to kind of show you this cool image that I saw where you can see the original Enterprise there. And then you can see that there is an Imperial class Star Destroyer right in the middle. And then right next to it is a galaxy class and a sovereign. And you can see that this is a massive, massive starship, okay? Now, the stat about a Galaxy class and Nebulon B being similar in power output, I don't agree with, but I'm going off the numbers. I wanna show you why. Okay, so we'll take a look. And as you can see, obviously, <laughs> the Imperial class Star Destroyer is just stupidly massive. You can see the Galaxy class really isn't that big compared to it. There at the bottom right, yeah, right there, you can see an Excelsior, and you can see, obviously, Nebulon B. Now, the Nebulon B is not a super, super, super tiny ship, but it's not really massive. I don't think that it should be anywhere close to the defensive capabilities of a Galaxy class. Honestly, it should be in the same realm as an Excelsior. When you compare them, they're more... They're more similar in size, in my opinion, but we're going off what the Star Wars data tables are saying, and so that's what it is, is what it is. Okay, so now that we got that, we figured that out, we know what the Nebulon B is, we know its shields, we know its hull, we know how many times it's been shot, we know the shields went down 14, hull value's 12. If we use that formula, we now take our turbo lasers, which on our old graph is anywhere between 3,750 to 30,000. They are now being changed and they're being brought up to 85,500 terawatts. So just for this discussion, we're, because it's the heavy turbo lasers aboard an Imperial class Star Destroyer, which is what's destroyed our Nebulon B, we're kind of disregarding everything else and we're gonna focus on that and it's all the same turbo lasers. Even though Imperial Star Destroyers have different weapons, the Imperial 2, is really what that formula is based on, but I just decided what the crap, we're just gonna go with it anyways. All right, so now let's take a look at the SPD 6400, RUs 2722, Imperial Class 1, Star Destroyer. So with a conversion, the shields are 12,640,000, the whole value is 6,238,824 is what it actually is. So the fence is 18,878,000, 824,000. Those are some huge numbers. Those are massive. So right off the bat, we can tell that the Imperial class Star Destroyer is definitely going to be able to take on a galaxy class starship. Matter of fact, it's going to take a lot of galaxy class to take on something like this. And 
this is the reason why. So let's go ahead and let's just do a comparative analysis. Let's look at it so we can see. So we got, you know, the shields are around uh, 1,755,000. The hull value is, and that says hail. I should say hull. 1,190,000. Wow, there's so many mistakes. I need to fix all this stuff. So I'll quit using it. But whatever. Uh, the full defense is 2,946,000. So when we kind of look at it in analysis, it would probably take at least six galaxy class starships in order to take on one imperial class star destroyer now there is obviously one special kind of workaround that we've talked about that i could talk about here again that would give the star trek universe a huge advantage over the star wars ships now and that would be number one. The obviously the galaxy class starships are much much faster, way more maneuverable, and their range is absolutely dominating. So to be honest with you, if they were in close proximity, like they were fighting up close, like we see normally in Star Trek and Star Wars fights, yes, you'd probably need six galaxy classes that are up close and personal to take on one Imperial class star destroyer. But if you're in a situation where you can not have to do that, then the Galaxy class can use its torpedoes and phasers at ranges that the Imperial class turbo lasers can't reach. And not to mention they can't reach, the Enterprise could just continually move over impulse speed. It would be too fast for the Imperial class weapons to lock on. They're used to hitting weapons and ships that are you know, moving around, you know, a thousand to 500 miles per hour. So photon torpedo technology is very advanced in the Star Trek universe and in the Star Wars universe, um, it's not as common to use torpedo technology and it's definitely not as advanced as it is in the Star Trek universe. So one of the big advantages you would get from using photon torpedoes is they're much faster than torpedoes in Star Wars. The destructive capabilities are similar, but the way the shielding works in the Star Wars universe is so much different than Star Trek. There are shields, which are called thermal shields, which operate exactly the same to stop energy and physical attacks, and they're called thermal shields. But thermal shields are very rare in the Star Wars universe because they're incredibly expensive and they take a lot of power. So for an example, Emerald Trench has a Prov Providence cruiser, which has a thermal shield. And his ship was like 400 million credits. And it's similar size to an Imperial class, which is 150 million credits. So having a thermal shield is like almost raising the price by two or three times what it would be for a large capital ship. So almost all ships that are used by the rebels or the empire they use an energy shield which stops energy weapons but does nothing against physical objects these ships do have something called a ray shield and it stops only physical objects so this is one of the reasons why fighters that go and bomb heavy capital ships are able to do so much damage is because a lot of these ships have just energy shields or and have relatively weak ray shields so in general, ray shields are significantly weaker than the energy shields. Uh, they're only able to take a few hits before they collapse. So that's why bombers are so dangerous, like the, the Y-wing or the B-wing or anything that's able to drop like actual physical bombs is very dangerous. Okay, so with that being said, that means that there's the potential that Star Trek shuttlecrafts or fighters could actually get close and drop photon torpedoes directly onto the hulls just like y-wings do but photon torpedoes are much stronger than proton bombs and things of that nature in the star wars universe it would be a much more dramatic effect okay so obviously the big difference between star wars and star trek ships is star wars ships have lots of fighters and stuff and the conversion if we added the conversion to the tie fighters and all the different ships that they have. So it's about a third the power of a turbo laser is what a laser cannon is doing. So if that's the case, so that means a TIE fighter would be hitting for around 
uh, 28,000 terawatts. So that means that it basically that weapon is in between a type 8 or type 9 phaser and then a clean on bird of prey. It's not at the same level as a clean on bird of prey, but it's it's up there. So it's actually probably closer than a type 9 phaser. Now, that sounds like a lot and that sounds very very impressive until you realize how slow TIE fighters are and then you realize how accurate Star Trek weaponry is, the, they, they would immediately wipe these things out as soon as they come out because they are hitting for a lot. For something so small, it's hitting for an incredible amount of power. It's just really hitting for a lot. So they would wipe these out in seconds. So the argument that these could make a difference is basically non-void because one burst of a type, let's say, uh, type type X phaser, the Sienna Galaxy class, they could take these ships out instantaneous within seconds. We've seen something like this in the Star Wars already, or Star Trek already, where the Galaxy class crew of the Enterprise is brainwashed and they attack some really crappy race that is basically like Star Wars and fighting with lasers and they're all like, doesn't even stop our navigational deflector, like what is going on here kind of thing. So that's exactly what would happen there. So I just want to throw that out there. And then, so just to give you an idea of how much firepower Imperial Class Star Destroyer has, it's got like 60-something turbo lasers, 60-something ion cannons. So altogether, like it'd be around 10,200,000 is basically what you're going to be getting in firepower. Obviously, that's a lot. That's way more than a Galaxy Class. But in a head-to-head -head fight, can one Galaxy class honestly take on an Imperial class Star Destroyer even though in its building materials are the same in the Star Trek universe? The answer is absolutely. Um, it could actually sit there and take down the shields. It would take a long time. It could use its torpedoes uh, for long range. And then once the shields go down in an Imperial class Star Destroyer, the Enterprise could beam a torpedo directly into the reactor if there is an explosion in the reactor of an Imperial class Star Destroyer, the whole freaking ship will explode. So, can an Imperial class Star Destroyer defeat a Galaxy class? Yes, it's situational though. If it comes out of hyperspace and it's in firing range, it will absolutely decimate the Galaxy class Starship, like within a few seconds. It won't take very long for it to completely collapse and be destroyed. The other thing is the ion weapons do not interact and act the same as the ion weapons that you see the Brie using. Um, they basically would do the same thing, but the they completely bypass shields and go and hit the ship, right, is what the Brie energy weaponing, or the Brie energy weapon does. That's not how ion weapons work. The ion weapons will just lower the shields, once the shields are down, then the ion weapons will do the exact same thing that the Brie uh, weapons do. But it's not till the shields are actually down that they're really going to be effective. All right, so obviously the winner in a true one-on-one -on -one battle would obviously be the Galaxy class with really no effort. Even with my scenario. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this. It was a really fun video. I kind of liked it. Now, if you have liked videos like this and you like comparative analysis of ships, what they're doing, what they could do, and you like this idea of me picking Star Wars, Star Trek, and mixing them together, if you like this, maybe give me a like, make a comment. Um, I'm going to be honest with you guys. My Star Wars videos have not done very well, and I'm going to probably go back to just making normal Star Trek videos. I just wanted to do this because I just thought it was really fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the future.